I'm Sir Evans, and welcome to some real life morning motivation. Because no one wakes up in the morning and says, I hope I have a bad day. My desire is to empower and inspire your daily endeavors. Because you can do whatever you set your mind to. The question is, what do you want to do? Whether you're still finding your passion, pursuing it, or living it, motivation is a daily requirement for your success. So here's your morning motivation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me for another episode of the Surreal Life Morning Motivation Podcast Show. And I'm your host for the day, and your host as always, Sir Evans. It's a blessing to be here, y'all. I, I'm... I wake up on about an 8 or 9 every single day. Um, I'm blessed to see a new year. Blessed to see a new day. I'm blessed to have you here with me. I'm I'm just blessed. Um, In the words of the good brother Dave Ramsey, I am feeling better than I deserve. So, I just want to thank you. I hope that you are feeling fantastic. I hope that your week has been a basket of blessings in which you have found yourself trying to figure out how to best maneuver all of the things that are being bestowed upon you. And if it's not, then I pray that you can actually see the blessings and even more importantly, see the silver lining in the midst of the cloud that you're going through right now. I think that as we embark on this new year, this is one of those times of year where, you know, they lit that that pistol in the air, pow! When the horses run out of the racetrack and everybody's just off galloping off to their goals, off galloping into the 2021, or even like when they used to watch the be in the WWF, and yes, I was a wrestling fan, you know, that first few seconds when they really just really getting into it and just doing a little punches to the chest and then they start throwing each other into the ropes. We ain't gotten to the rope throwing yet. Right now, we're in that point where they just get into it and they lock up and they hitting each other. This is that time. We're in that point of the year when the races are off and everybody's fired up. We haven't got to the peak yet. We might not even got to the smoke yet. But some of y'all probably didn't got a little smoky so far. Some of y'all probably, some of the some of y'all 2021s probably didn't got off with a with a real rioty start. And that's cool. That's all good. It's all good. Don't worry. Don't worry. You you not in this alone. I'm here right with you, and you got some more people that's right here with you. Probably can find a couple in the comments. Finally can find a couple in the morning motivation text thread. But I just want to let you know that you are not alone. However, in the midst of this race, in the midst of this 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 um, battle, if you will, of the have tos and the get tos, the haves and the have nots. We are all trying to get to where we want to go. Some of you might not be aware of where it is that you want to go just yet, and that's fine. Some of you are fully aware of where you're going, and you are just in pursuit. And some of y'all, on both sides of that spectrum, might be considering, how can I get there faster? We are living in a time of the overly saturated how to get fast movement. You can pretty much go on Google and look at the top selling books and I would guarantee you out of the top 10 best sellers, there's probably one or two to three to four that have something in the title that has to deal with moving expeditiously. Whether it's how to get your blessings in a hurry, whether it's how to get your business started in a hurry, how to get rich in a hurry, how to clean up your credit in a hurry, how to get over a relationship in a hurry, how to change your mind in a hurry, how to lose weight in a hurry. Everything is microwaved up. Everything. And that's just not what we need at this stage in the game. We don't need a recipe on how to get there faster. Because I'll tell you one thing. The recipe that involves you getting there faster probably cut out some key ingredients that involve you staying there longer. 
with that being said I want to get into this morning motivation but don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to subscribe to the morning motivation text thread by texting motivate me to 31996 if you or somebody else that you know may be in need of inspiration motivation and empowerment Morning Motivations is a text thread that started a couple of years ago in which I send out morning motivation messages to hundreds of people across the country, even a few across the globe that are just searching to stay motivated daily. So come on, join in. We got some exciting things coming up this year. I would love for you to be a part of it. Text 31996, motivate me. Would love for you to be a part of the journey. I would love to be able to help you or serve you in an inspirational capacity so let's go ahead and get this day morning afternoon whenever you listening cranked up a family member of mine owns a creative art studio that was built in the late 1800s it's a beautiful three-story brownstone and it's actually one of the few brownstones still standing in cleveland ohio there's only one headache and that's that you know you're going to face there's only one headache that you know you're going to face when you go in and that's the stairs no matter how many times I go up those stairs in order to make it to the top floor with the breathtaking view of the city skyline the stairs are forever tiresome sometimes we joke about installing the elevator into the building or some type of pulley system but at the end of the day the stairs make the building special and they make you appreciate the studio even more once you've reached the top success is a lot like one of those old school buildings there is no easy way to the top because the elevator doesn't exist there isn't a quicker method to the pinnacle and there's no shortcut to the top floor when there is an absence of automatic ele elevation there's always a flight of stairs ready to take you to your destination there is no easy way to the top because the elevator doesn't exist when there are no stairs available that is when the building is a safety hazard and there is typically no access to the building at all success without stairs is not success at all Therefore, do not be deceived, but that's not the same as not being able to find the staircase in order to climb. No matter how many pursuits of success you encounter, you will always have to take the stairs. Lord, hurt me. Now listen, y'all. One of my buddy's family. I actually had to go down here today. Before I started filming this morning for this episode, I had to go down there and do some film work for um, <clears throat> my Surreal Life page, for the music page and the behind the scenes of quality service. And I haven't been down there in a couple of months. And I tell you, those stairs, there's like, there's like six flights of stairs. I might be exaggerating, but they're, they're like, the way that they're designed, it's just problematic. It's not like a, they're like a very shallow step. And by the time you get to the top, every single time, you feel like you got to work out. I've been up these stairs on crutches because I wanted to record so bad. I remember when they were building a studio on the top floor, they had to move the drywall from the first floor to the top floor, had to... Um, had to get the insulation from the bottom floor to the top floor and that insulation was like 20 25 30 pounds a row i would go over there sometimes and just take it upstairs just to get my exercise in for the day just to get my workout in like these stairs is serious but once you get to the top floor because that's where all the action is that's where the studio is the view there's a view that overlooks the city skyline is just beautiful once you get up there and really just get a second to gather your breath it was worth it 
it's just a refreshing view of the top of the city. You're working on something that you love. You're in there, you're being passionate with your project and it makes the experience worth it. When we're going through life and we are in a pursuit of our success, there are no elevators for success. There's no way to avoid the work. Now, I'll give you this. You might even run across an escalator or two. You might even run across somebody that's willing to throw you over their shoulder and say, I'll carry you a couple of flights. But there are no elevators for success. See, a lot of times, especially this time, we start to figure out, we start to see Tom, Dick and Harry, Jane, Sue and Mary, all trying to, all at a successful level. And if you haven't reached that, and I don't care what level you are, I always feel like for some reason, as human beings, we got our neck up. Um, even the people that look down on those who they feel are beneath them are still having their head up looking to somebody else. And the truly humble are always looking up, but they're not looking up at the ones who are looking down on them. They're looking higher than that because it's a higher power that they're striving to get to. Message! Whole another episode. But a lot of times we have to really remember that we got to do the work. And one of the reasons I wanted to kick this episode off early this year, because as you are going, 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 and you probably got all the juice with you right now, or you might be trying to find the juice, but most importantly, this is mostly a momentum time of year. The beginning of the year is always that reset button for a lot of people. And I want to remind you and not to distract you or not to deter you, but it's going to be some hard work. It's going to be a grind getting to where you want to get to. It's going to be a grind finishing up that school. It's going to be a grind getting that next level of your business off of the ground. It's going to be a grind trying to hit those financial goals. It's going to be a grind trying to stop those bad habits. It's going to be a grind trying to grow your spiritual relationship. It's going to be a grind to change those emotional habits that you have because there are no elevators for your success. There are no, there is no other way aside from the steps. There is no quicker method to the pinnacle. And success without stairs does not exist at all. So let me explain that. I'm from Cleveland. Cleveland, the original home of Rockefeller, Steinbrenner, hey, 15 minutes away, Vermillion. But we had a lot of millionaires here. A lot of people that went on to different states to really boom their economy. But one of the things that they left before they left were a lot of beautiful architecture and a dirty river. But that's besides the point. That's as culture. But we have a lot of buildings that are very old and illustrious buildings because and homes, because back in this time, Back in that time, there was a lot of money flowing through the city, so people wanted to live in a manner which reflected that. So when you go into a lot of these older buildings, brownstones, older homes, especially like the brownstone, you don't have any elevators, right? But even in the older buildings, some of these, they had to implement elevators after. But if there's no stairs or an elevator in the building, that building could easily be deemed as a safety hazard. You wanna know why that is? Because there's no safe way to get out of the building. They're not really concerned with you getting into the building. They're more concerned with you getting out of the building. And hence success. You ain't gonna be on top forever. They are gonna need you out. Because at the end of the day, 
somebody else is going to retake is going to replace you somebody else is going to be where you are somebody else is going to be where you're trying to get to i don't care if you're on the third step the fifth step the tenth step or the top step somebody is always going to replace you and somebody is always looking to replace you but if you encounter something that doesn't have any stairs that's not something worth being pursued because for one there's no elevation involved there might be de-elevation also so you also need to be aware of what direction are the stairs going in are the stairs taking you up or are they taking you down but let's not get off topic because I'm going somewhere with those stairs a building without stairs is not success at all and there's a difference between that and not being able to find the stairs now I've also been in some buildings where you know a lot of times you might have the stairs and the elevator next to each other you might have the plan or the action required to commit to something and then you got somebody selling you fool's gold right next to you they usually come close to each other they usually usually when we try to get rich quick or do something quick we have more than likely already seen what it's going to take to do that slowly it's not a mystery but then there are some times where you have to actually find the method and that's a different from not being from there being no method at all because everything under the sun has been done so you can be successful at just about every single thing even failing and there's a sure fire recipe on how to do so but don't confuse your inability to not be able to find the stairs or not being able to find the plan of action with there not being a plan of action don't confuse your inability to be able to find out how to execute on a goal with it not being a goal that's suitable for you or something that you can't attain I am a firm believer that you can do anything that you set your mind to I don't believe you can do everything so as we're embarking, I think a lot of times, a lot of people in a lot of circumstances will sell you an idea that there are no stairs here, my friend. There is no way that you can get to the top here. And I beg to differ. It's not a matter of whether you can get there or get in and get up. It's a matter of how. Sometimes you gotta go around the building and find the stairs. Sometimes you gotta go through the building and spend a little extra time to find the stairs that's going to take you to where you need to get to. So I wanted to highlight a few steps to help you with your climb. Number one, focus on one day at a time. You are an adult. This is no mystery there's probably a high probability that I'm not talking to a five-year-old. But if you are a teenager, you're soon to be an adult. And either way, I'm more than likely sure when you go up the stairs, you don't try to hop up three to five stairs at a time. Now, I know some of you athletic types out there, you might say, I might not hop, but I might stretch over two or three steps okay cool do you do that every single place that you go I'm more than likely sure you don't when you're out there exercising and you're doing a little squat hops up the stairs do you squat hop at work do you squat hop at your children's school do you squat hop when you go into your home no you do it at selective times the majority of the time you are sensible enough to understand that you can only go up one step at a time have you ever had one of those days where you don't even do one step at a time you do uh, both feet on the same step and then you go up again maybe your back a leg or something might be hurting or you might be having one of those I'm feeling lazy days and it's one step one foot one step two foot and then you keep going sometimes you got to break the days down like that but in order to get for, get to where you need to go you can only do one step at a time. And no matter how you look at it, 
There are several variables that every human being has in common. But one of the most critical ones is that they can only live one day at a time. If you can live two days at a time, go and leave me a comment. Go and uh, drop me a call. Shoot me a text in the 31996 Motivate Me and then uh, leave your name and leave your contact number because I'd like to see how you do that. I'm not sure um, what side you're working for. Magicians or maybe you with the second coming and you know something that we don't know. But I would love to know how your omnipresence is working out if you can live more than one day at a time. So focus on what you got. Focus on what you got. Stop trying to pull the problems from tomorrow into today. Stop trying to worry about the steps you stumbled down yesterday as you're focusing on today because it'll slow you down. It'll hinder you. It'll stop you. It'll stagger you. Put your best foot forward today. It's all you got. It's all you can do. Sometimes you have to avoid looking up because if you look up and you had a tall flight of stairs and you sail somewhere near the bottom, it might be a little distracting. The same rules apply if you're too up too high. And you got to go down. And Lord knows you didn't want to come down, but you got to do it. One step at a time. Number two. Did you do your homework? <laughs> if you listen, then you know I always assign a homework assignment at the end of the episode. But this is a little different. Here's the thing. The game is always being sold. It's seldomly being told. But it's always being taught. I'm going to say that again. The game is being sold. It's seldomly being told. But the game is always being taught. Are you getting it from a seller or a sensei? That's the question. Did you do your homework? Who'd you get it from? What's it costing you? Because you only got time or money. And one of them is going to be more detrimental to the steps that you're taking than the other. But if you don't have the other one, then you have to lean on it. But did you do your homework? Because one way or another... When it comes time to go up those stairs, whether you are convinced that there's an elevator depends on who you got your information from. Because a seller will sell you a dream. A seller will sell you hope. A seller will sell you a boat with a hole in it for you to sink and drown. A seller might sell you some of the game. Very seldomly would a seller sell you all of the game. Unless he can keep you coming back. And sometimes that coming back requires you to go down a stair, up a stair, down a stair, up two stairs. But it's always being taught. I would recommend maybe a mentor versus a seller. And to each its own. But I don't think that you should be paying for a mentor. That's just me. That's my personal opinion. Because truthfully, if I'm paying for a mentor, you're not a mentor. You have a different title. You're a consultant. If you don't have the time, then you need to have the money. And if you don't have the money, then you need to have the time. And if you don't have the time to take the stairs, it's not the right time for you to take the flight. If you don't have the time to go up the stairs, this is probably not the time for you to go. Maybe you need to reevaluate your decisions. Perhaps it's time for you to reevaluate the amount of stairs that is inside of the goal that you're striving to attain. It's also maybe the time for you to reevaluate what else is taking up the time that's preventing you from your purpose. Number three. There's different elements present at different levels. So be prepared. I'm not going to dive too deep into this one because I have a series that I wanted to discuss this based upon altitude. But I want to repeat that 
because there's different elements present at different levels of your climb. You're always going to be energized at the beginning. So you need to expect fatigue along the way. Maybe some of you started off this year sluggish. Maybe some of you already anticipated that I'm going to hit this running, but there's a chance that I'm going to be running on E at some point in time, whether it's through my circumstances or whether it's through the journey. But did you prepare for fatigue? Some of you are hitting this thing 100 miles per hour and have not taken fatigue into accountability. The longer you climb those stairs, the more work that you're doing, you're going to feel fatigued. Even the most conditioned person is going to feel fatigued, and you want to know why? They might not feel fatigued at the same thing that you feel fatigued at, but their staircase is probably higher because they've probably done more training for it. But that also means that fatigue is still going to set in at some point in time. Either that or they might need to increase their staircase. Either that or they might need to increase their goals. Either that or they might need to raise the bar a little higher for what they deem to be success. Expect a second wind. So as we're talking about this fatigue, as we're talking about that feeling of feeling tired, in the same scenario where maybe you started off this year feeling sluggish, expect your second wind to carry you. Expect that second wind to kick in and give you that extra juice. Expect that when you are going, and I advise you to pace yourself, that even when fatigue sets in, if you continue without quitting, you will feel a second wind never fails i've never been in the midst of a workout and not and worked out long enough where that second switch didn't flip especially if i kept going long enough your second win will come i think that there's a difference and i had to learn this in my own life there's a difference between stopping pausing and quitting it's okay for you to stop it's okay for you to pause. I like pause better than stop, but I like both of them better than quitting. If you find yourself on that stairway to success and you feel as though the fatigue is just too much, rest you haven't seen it as much as you want it. It's okay for you to pause. Those are your stairs. You might see some other people trying to run it up the stairs running up their own stairs, running down. But at the end of the day, you own those stairs. When you're on those stairs, they're yours. Doesn't matter who's ahead, doesn't matter who's behind. When you're on those stairs, you own them. So if you feel like you need to take a rest in order for you to get to the top, I recommend you do so. And don't let anybody tell you that there's no difference between stopping and quitting. Iron sharpens iron, but encouragement breeds empowerment. So remember when I said that you were on those stairs and you own those stairs? I literally just said it. But as you're running, and as you're going up them stairs, you might see somebody on another staircase. Let's say you're in like a building full of spiraling staircases. Building full of spiraling staircases. And you see somebody over there next to you who's also a little tired. And it might have been a point about the same time where you had just finished taking a rest or where you just finished being tired and now you're, you're back at it again. You offer an encouragement to somebody else is what they need to help them, just like it would help you to feel encouraged to continue to climb. And when we comprise ourselves with enough of these type of people or these type of entities and these type of uh, surroundings, it not only makes the journey more easier, but it makes the journey more enjoyable. We now feel empowered. We now feel encouraged as we're 
in a lifelong pursuit of purpose, manifest destiny and success. So as that iron sharpens iron, we're helping one another get better. Because although you own those stairs like you own your life, that does not mean that you're doing life by yourself. You're still in the midst of it with others. Just own your life and make sure that you're encouraging others. This is one that always helped me, and this is number four. Resiliency is like a backup generator for consistency. I say that because there have been point in times when life has hit me and dealt me some cards that impacted my consistency with a particular goal, whether it was music, whether it was my weight loss, whether it was school, regardless, whatever it might have been that I might have been dealing with, circumstances dealt might have impacted my consistency. However, I always had the resiliency to carry on. I've always been more resilient than my failures to continue the journey that I began. And that resiliency is what you will need when you feel as though your level of consistency has declined. When you feel like your level of consistency might not even be there. If you have resiliency, then you can have consistency. It will serve as that backup generator when your consistency levels feel like they're at low. They will serve as your refueling when you feel as though your consistency is declining and you need something to boost you up again. That resiliency will serve as your backup generator. Lastly, number five, I want you to remember the value of your journey. Remember when I said earlier that that brownstone building that we would go down to and record and do our work into. The value or the real treasure was once we made it to the top floor. The reward and the benefit of those stairs was all worth it. Once we got to the top floor, we were able to create artistically. We were able to be in an environment that we enjoyed and we were also able to enjoy the scenery while we enjoyed doing what we love to do. Those stairs provided value for the journey. I feel like without rem being reminded of the value in the journey that you're pursuing, then you won't appreciate the destination or the journey itself. Which is why I feel like God designed our success to be without an elevator. That is why I feel like God designed faith to operate without an elevator. Because it's something that you have to take one step at a time. It's something that you have to climb in order to become better at. It's something that you have to elevate in order to reach where you want to reach. And through that fatigue, through that second wind, through that empowerment of others, and through remembering the value of your journey, we are much more appreciative of not only the stairs that we took, but those who were with us on our journey and the one who allowed us to complete the journey by giving us one day at a time. My homework assignment is simple today. My homework assignment is just to encourage you to reflect on your approach. If your approach needs a better pace, I recommend you take it. If your approach is one that feels as though it's designed by the best get there quick guru I recommend you to reconsider because sometimes 
when we spend that time and we spend that money trying to get there quick we're really just spinning our wheels in quicksand when we could have been building a structure on solid foundation so once again if you like the episode if you like what you hear feel free to subscribe that way whenever the new motivations come out the new podcasts come out you'll be first to receive it And also feel free to subscribe to the Morning Motivation text thread by texting Motivate Me to 31996. This has been a beautiful episode, y'all. Continue your pursuit into this new year, the unknown. Be sure to trust your vision over your sight when you are facing unforeseen destinations. And until the next time, I'm your host for the day and your host always, Sir Evans. Salute. Stay blessed. I'm Sir Evans, and you've been listening to Surreal Life, Morning Motivation. Available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, and wherever else you listen to your podcasts. Feel free to subscribe, rate, and review this episode. And join me next week for Surreal Life, Morning Motivation. Thank you for listening. Salute. Salute.